Dear students, I invite you to this presentation on tourism benefits, impacts and mitigation measures. Like two sides of a coin, there are both positive and negative impacts felt out of tourism. Tourism can bring in more and more economic, social and environmental benefits. But at the same time, it is also associated with negative impacts on the fields like economy, society, culture and environment. Mitigation is an activity which helps us to lessen the negative impacts. Therefore, tourism planning has to be done by considering both positive and negative impacts of tourism. Let us have the following points as our objectives to know more about tourism impacts and mitigation measures. Impact mitigation measures Socio-cultural impacts of tourism Economic impacts of tourism Environmental impacts of tourism Role of government and issues related to planning Impact mitigation measures Introduction What is mitigation? First, let us define the term mitigation. It is the process of lessening or eliminating damage or destruction from surface disturbing activities. It is lessening or eliminating loss to the public from land exchanges or sales. Further, it can be defined as the implementation of measures designed to reduce the undesirable effects of a proposed action on the environment. Mitigation is a solution to the Environmental Impact Assessment or EIA process. It helps to achieve environmentally sound design. The intention of mitigation is to recognize measures that preserve the environment and the community those may be affected by the tourism projects. Mitigation is both a creative and practical phase of the EIA process. It searches to find the best ways and means of avoiding, minimizing and remedying impacts. Hence the objectives of mitigation are to find better alternatives and ways of carrying out the tourism activities, to enhance the environmental and social benefits out of tourism, to avoid or minimize adverse impacts, to ensure that the adverse impacts are kept within acceptable levels, to ensure they are appropriate, environmentally sound and cost effective, and use compensation or remedial measures as a least resort. Mitigation process. There are three elements of mitigation. They are organized into a hierarchy of actions as follows. Avoidance, Minimization and Compensation Step 1. Impact Avoidance With the help of preventative measures, you can avoid adverse impacts. This step is most effective when applied at an early stage of project planning. It can be attained by Avoiding particular projects or elements that could result in adverse impacts Avoiding areas that are environmentally sensitive and implementing preventative measures to stop adverse impacts, for example, release of water from a reservoir to maintain a fisheries regime. Step 2. Impact Minimization During this stage, adverse impacts should be reduced to as low as practicable levels. This step is usually taken during impact identification and prediction to limit to reduce the degree, extent of adverse impacts. It can be achieved by scaling down or relocating the proposal, redesigning elements of the project and taking supplementary measures to manage the impacts. Step 3. Impact Compensation Remedy or compensate for adverse residual impacts which are unavoidable and cannot be reduced further. This step is usually applied to remedy unavoidable residual adverse impacts. It can be achieved by rehabilitation, restoration and replacement. For instance, rehabilitation of the affected environment, this can be done by habitat enhancement and restocking fish. Restoration of the affected environment to its previous state or better 
as typically required for mine states, forestry roads and seismic lines and replacement of the same resource values at another location, for example, by wetland engineering to provide an equivalent area to then lost to drainage or infill. Mitigation measures. Mitigation measures are intended for the elimination, reduction or control of the adverse environmental impact of the project. It includes restitution by replacement, restoration, compensation or other means for damage to the environment caused by the impact. Mitigation measures are successful only when they are decoded into strokes in the accurate way and at the right time. Proposed mitigation measures should be able to illustrate the impact it will avoid, mitigate or compensate when implemented, an assessment of the effectiveness of protection measures, the next best alternative, the cost of the protection measures, and the implementation plan for putting the measure into practice. Through a variety of tools, activities, projects and programs, mitigation implementation is accomplished. Some tools can be utilized only by public sector entities, while some can be used by both public and the private sector. Mitigation is typically less expensive to implement when included in the planning, Mitigating the potential for natural hazard damages in the existing structures is generally more costly but when carried out effectively before a disaster prevents loss of the life or reduces damages and also avoids the outlay of associated costs for response and recovery operations. Benefits of mitigation measures Friendly alternative Mitigation is the best alternative to environment because it allows development to occur. Mitigation industry. Mitigation inevitably creates a mitigation industry. Targeting ecological value. Mitigation has the potential to save and restore the most valuable environmental resources at the least cost, assuming that regulation protects health and welfare as defined by the National Environmental Policy Act NEPA and assures that a credit accurately represents measurable ecological value. Buyers are typically looking for mitigation credits that are both cheap and the most likely to meet regulatory requirements for compensatory mitigation. Regulators must therefore find a balance between protecting the long-term public interest and ensuring that buyers have the proper incentives to participate in the environmental marketplace. Cost Burden Mitigation system place the environmental costs of the development mostly on the individuals or entities that are impacting the environment. Without environmental mitigation, costs of alleviating environmental damage caused by the development could be placed in the hands of the government which would in turn pass costs on to the taxpayers not responsible for the environmental impacts. Benefit to landowners Land previously unused or impractical for development is given greater monetary value under a mitigation system. For instance, Land in flood plains may be impractical for commercial or residential development but conductive for mitigation activities. Land in rural areas with very little potential for growth are more valuable when given the opportunity to be used for mitigation credits. Disadvantages Inaccurate allocation and valuation of credits and debits Mitigation regulations may not properly take into account the total ecological losses and gains associated with environmental impacts or mitigation when allocating debits and credits. Governing bodies are primarily responsible for prescribing the ecological criteria required to attain credits for mitigation. They are also responsible for the valuation of credit. Therefore, it is evident that problems with the allocation and valuation of credits and debits might stem from the complexity of assessing the current comparative value of ecological resources 
also known as ecosystem services. Ecosystem change over time and or, or a lack of understanding about what is beneficial or harmful to the environment overall. To address these uncertainties, regulators often assign coverage ratios to compensatory mitigation agreements. Effects on land cost and availability Mitigation could be seen as contributing to the increasing cost of land because some mitigation work requires that large amounts of land be purchased or put into conservation easements. Mitigation can therefore compete with other rural land uses such as agriculture and residential development. This suggests that landowners must be alert to find the highest and best use for their properties given the potential market value that mitigation credits represent. Problems with in perpetuity commitments of land Commitment of lands to compensatory mitigation must be done in perpetuity, meaning permanently into the future. Otherwise, the long-term public interest could not be served via compensatory mitigation programs. This means that properties must continue to be managed with ecosystem values in mind, sometimes preventing landowners from transforming the landscape to meet changes needs. For example, Future large-scale development projects would not likely be permitted on previously dedicated mitigation properties. Socio-cultural impacts of tourism Let me list out the positive impacts of tourism on society and culture. It improves quality of life, facilitates meeting visitors, positive changes in values and customs, promotes cultural exchange, improves understanding of different communities, preserves cultural identity of host population, increases demand for historical and cultural exhibits, greater tolerance of social differences, satisfaction of psychological needs. Negative impacts of tourism on society and culture are Excessive drinking, alcoholism, gambling, increased underage drinking, crime, drugs, prostitution, increased smuggling, language and cultural effects, unwanted lifestyle changes, displacement of residents for tourism development, negative changes in values and customs, family disruption, Exclusion of locals from natural resources. New clicks modify social structure. Natural, political and public relation calamities. Economic impacts of tourism. The positive impacts of tourism on economy are as follows. Contributes to income and standard of living. Improves local economy increases employment opportunities, improves investment, development and infrastructure spending, increases tax revenues, improves transport infrastructure, increased opportunities for shopping, creates new business opportunities. The negative impacts are increases price of goods and services, Increases price of land and housing. Increases cost of living. Increases potential for imported labor. Cost for additional infrastructure like water, sewer, power, fuel, medical, etc. Increases road maintenance and transportation system costs. Seasonal tourism creates high risk under or unemployment issues. Competition for land with other higher value economic uses. Profits may be exported by non-local owners. Jobs may pay low wages. Environmental impacts of tourism. Let us discuss the positive impacts of tourism on environment. They are 
protection of selected natural environments or prevention of further ecological decline, preservation of historic buildings and monuments, improvement of the area's appearance, visual or aesthetic, a clean industry. The negative impacts of tourism on environment are listed below. Pollution through air, water, noise, solid waste and visual. Loss of natural landscape and agricultural lands of tourism development. Loss of open space. Destruction of flora and fauna. This includes collection of plants, animals, rocks, coral or artifacts by or for tourists. Degradation of landscape, historic sites and monuments, water shortages, introduction of exotic species, disruption of wildlife breeding cycles and behaviors, etc. Role of government and issue related to planning. The Ministry of Tourism is the nodal agency for the development and promotion of tourism in India and maintains the Incredible India campaign. Atiti Devo Bhava is yet another campaign implemented by the government to encourage tourism in India. It includes various components. One such component teaches and motivates the local community to participate in tourism activities with utmost feel of hospitality when they interact with foreign tourists. The Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, has recognized the contribution of tourism to the growth of economy, employment, opportunities, development of infrastructure, etc. With reference to the project TIGER, more than half of the Ministry of Tourism's planned budget has been allotted for funding the development of destinations, circuits, mega projects as well as rural tourism infrastructure projects. According to Press Information Bureau, Ministry of Tourism has launched the campaign Clean India to sensitize all sections of society on the importance of cleanliness and hygiene in public places, particularly monuments and tourist destinations. This campaign is to be sustained through adoption and involvement of private and public sector stakeholders as part of their corporate social responsibility. It is a voluntary scheme and no funds have been allotted by the government for this campaign. One more initiative has been taken by Indian Tourism Development Corporation is it has adopted Kutub Minar in Delhi and an MOU has been signed between Archaeological Survey of India, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation and the Ministry of Tourism for undertaking various works at Taj Mahal, Agra under this campaign. Added to the above, Ministry of Tourism has implemented two new schemes in the name of Swadesh Darshan and Prasad from 2014 to 2015. Under these schemes, the Ministry provides financial support for infrastructure development including wayside amenities, garbage bins, sewage, effluent disposal, etc. Conclusion Though tourism can help in economic elevation, Socio-cultural and infrastructure developments, particularly in rural areas of the country, mass tourism brings in the negative impacts. Tourism can only be sustainable if it is carefully managed so that potential negative effects on the host community and the environment are not permitted to outweigh the financial benefits. Thank you.